Last year, Simon Salagori from the East Sepik stood outside his house at Lay's Nawai block as it was engulfed in flames. One of his sons had been accused of attacking another man and in retaliation, his father's house had been set on fire. Today, Simon and his family have not quite recovered from the attack. The house that stood on cement posts has not been rebuilt and his only means of income now is from a small block of land in another part of Nawai block. Simon came to Lay in 1957. He built a life with his family and finally retired several years ago. But the scars of the alcohol-triggered fighting in his neighborhood have left him longing for the early days when Lay City was just a town. In Five Mile, outside of Lay City, retired teacher Ignatius Bagle is still waiting for the provincial government and law and order authorities to act on complaints he sent to them in 2012. His house was burnt in a similar attack. Number, only house and fire, 33 houses all get up. Bagle spent 47 years of his life teaching primary school children. His house was burnt after members of his community were accused of stoning a passing vehicle. Mibla, now independent, long time. Mibla must now come up civilized, civilized religion. Mibla must clear us, have a good legal law. Sindanglo, Mibla. We are playing again, criticizing in Papua New Guinea. We are an independent country. We are to problem us, grow up all the same, rightful people. Bagley says much of the problems stem from alcohol consumption and the lack of discipline, and it's causing communities in the country to fragment. You know that discipline, Papa Mama, in school, more young people, you know, discipline in all. Now, this time, worse. Come and do it, stop him, you know. The impacts of illegal alcohol also affect the women and children. They're left homeless without food and water. But the elderly, many of whom came to lay when it was peaceful, have learned to accept the difficulties. Many have stopped trying to fight the changes. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay.